CES is the land of TVs. At this Las Vegas tech show, they are predictably everywhere. They're on walls and ovens and washers. They're on buildings. They are buildings. But with all this innovation, we think there's one area that companies are missing out on. Where are all the small TVs? <laughs> like the ones we used to have in our kitchen counters, in our garages, or those portable ones we could take anywhere. Here at CES, everything that is new and next is on display. So we're setting out at the biggest TV show to see if anyone cares about the little guys. First thing we noticed at this year's show is that all of these companies kept saying the same thing. Samsung's all about going bigger rather than going smaller. I mean, bigger is better when it comes to screen sizes. We'll go bigger. We can go really big. Companies like Hisense, Samsung, and TCL were all showing off TVs over 100 inches. Wall devouring, 115 inch. It is wall devouring. I'm not sure about much, but I am sure that I will never have a room big enough for this. If you do though, let's hang. But if the TV wasn't huge, it was most likely see-through. Can we even call this a TV? LG had a massive wall of its OLED signature T for transparent 77-inch TVs. It has a contrast film that, with the push of a button, can be raised to make it look like the TV is any regular old OLED, or lowered if you want to see what's behind it. For now, that only comes in one size, a whopping 77 inches. And the company's smallest TV at CES? It was a 30-pound suitcase housing a 27-inch TV. This is Stand By Me Go. It has a 1080p LCD panel and a built-in battery. And while technically this TV is portable, it's still pretty big. So I know what you're thinking. You watch TV on your phone and your tablet and your laptop. So aren't those the smallest TVs? Sure, but it's not exactly what we're talking about here. TVs are televisions. Traditional standalone screens made for viewing entertainment. Phones and laptops are computers and do a lot of other things. And are computer monitors TVs? You can certainly argue for it, but we'll leave those out because they don't have any tuners in them. We're talking about TVs made by TV manufacturers that don't take up our entire walls in our homes, but instead offer audio and visual companionship without attention-seeking strings attached. And big TV manufacturers? they aren't really thinking about those small sizes anymore. Why isn't there a TV smaller than 32 inches? Yeah, I'm thinking that with the features that people want on a TV with HDMI connectivity, gaming features, brightness, suits itself to a 32 inch screen, smaller than that, people are pivoting to a lot of uh, tablet devices like TCL's Next Paper tablets. A 32 inch versus a 24 inch the old, of the old uh, smaller TVs, about the same kind of price range, so from a, a price perspective, uh, that's about as uh, low as you're going to get anyway. We see one of the biggest regrets when customers purchase a TV. It's a couple weeks down the road, they say, I wish I went with the next size up. But behind the giant flashy booths, deeper into the show floor, we found something closer to what we were looking for. Hi, I'm Sam from Supersonic. We're at CES 2024. And I'm going to walk you through some of our portable, uh, smaller size uh, screens that we have. Currently, we have 7 inch, 9 inch, 12 inch, 14 inch with built in batteries, um, AC, DC, and HDMI. Among many other wonderful specs. What you could use these uh, as a standard television, or you could use it as a travel monitor, or in case of a hurricane or um, emergency, it has built in batteries. It comes with all kinds of the accessories, such as uh, AC, DC cable cords also um, FM radio. These TVs from Supersonic are reminiscent of the sets you'd bring to the beach or out on the deck to catch a baseball game while grilling. And with a quick look at the reviews of these devices on Amazon, it proves that folks are doing exactly that with them. You know, obviously bigger is better, but there's still people need 13 inch, 15 inch, 19 inch TVs uh, for travel or emergency. So we have all kinds of TVs that are available smart, non-smart, with DVD, et cetera, like that. The giant TV brands have totally abandoned this class of TVs. Because for the most part, we're all just tiny bugs flying towards the brightest, biggest, cheapest light. Uh, they just get bigger and bigger and bigger, my friend. This is CS number 11 for me, and I think these companies all say that consumers are gravitating towards just giant size screens. You see a lot of 75 inch, 98 inch and, and even more here at CES. It's gotten pretty obscene, but people keep buying those is what all these companies say. The small TVs are fewer and far between, unfortunately. 
So is the handheld tabletop TV slated for extinction? I mean, it certainly seems that way, because the way we watch TV has changed. Um, how do you use this thing? And here's what our journey at CES taught us. One, TVs are furniture again. The frame TV was a huge success for Samsung, and we saw a lot of competitor models from other brands on the show floor. LG's transparent TV, by far the most popular booth at CES, is marketed as a centerpiece. It can emulate a fish tank and paired with a bookshelf. Then on the other end of the spectrum, the displays are so small that you can wear them. We saw glasses from TCL and Xreal that promised to bring immersive TV watching right to your eyeballs. If I could just put these on in the airplane and that's how I see everything, so no one's watching me watch a movie from behind me on the plane. So maybe long gone are the days of the quality TV you can drop on your desk and then bring with you on the bus. Though it's comforting to know that folks like Supersonic are still keeping that dream alive, the tiny TVs we own are just going to be attached to something else now. But with all this innovation, we think there's one area that companies are missing out on. Where, where are, are all, all the, the small, small TVs? TVs?